mandible. In this topic, we will be discussing about the parts, attached ligaments, nerves in relation, positional changes, ossification, and clinical aspects of the mandible. The mandible is a bone forming the lower jaw. It is the largest, strongest, and lowest bone of the face and bears the lower teeth. Parts. The mandible is horseshoe shaped and consists of three parts. A horizontally oriented body and two vertically oriented rami. Body. The body of the mandible is U-shaped and presents two borders, a superior and an inferior. The superior border of the body is called the alveolar process. It bears sockets for the lower 16 teeth. The inferior border or base of the mandible presents a small depression called the digastric fossa on either side near the median plane. It gives attachment to the anterior belly of the digastric muscle. And two surfaces, an external surface and an internal surface. The external surface of the body presents the following features. Symphysis menti. This is a faint median ridge on the external surface of the body. It marks the line of fusion of the two halves of the mandible, which occurs at the age of two years. The symphysis menti expands below into a triangular elevation called the mental protuberance. It forms the point of the chin, the base of which is limited on each side by the mental tubercle. The inner aspect of the symphysis menti possesses four tubercles, called the genial tubercles, or mental spines, and are arranged into two pairs, upper and lower. Mental foramen. It lies below the interval between the premolar teeth and provides passage to the mental nerve and vessels. Oblique line. This is a continuation of the anterior border of the ramus. It runs downwards and forwards, towards the mental tubercle. Incisive fossa. It is a shallow depression just below the incisor teeth. The internal surface of the body presents with the following features. Mylohyoid line. This is a prominent oblique ridge that runs obliquely downwards and forwards from behind the third molar tooth till the symphysis menti, below the genial tubercles. The mylohyoid line divides the inner surface of the body into a sublingual fossa, which lies above the line, and a submandibular fossa, which lies below the line. Mylohyoid groove. This lies below the posterior end of the mylohyoid line. The mylohyoid nerve and vessels run in this groove. Sublingual fossa. This is a shallow area above the anterior part of the mylohyoid line and lodges the sublingual gland. Submandibular fossa. This is a slightly hollow area below the posterior part of the mylohyoid line and lodges the submandibular gland. Ramus. It is a quadrilateral vertical plate of bone that projects upwards from the posterior part of the body. It has the following parts. Two surfaces, a lateral and a medial. The lateral surface of the ramus is flat and bears a number of oblique ridges produced by the masseter muscle. The medial surface of the ramus presents the following features. Mandibular foramen. It is located a little above the center of the ramus and leads into the mandibular canal, which runs downwards and forwards into the body to open on its external surface as the mental foramen. It provides passage to the inferior alveolar nerve, which is a branch of the posterior division of the mandibular nerve, the inferior alveolar artery, which is a branch of the first part of the maxillary artery, and the inferior alveolar vein. Lingula. This is a small tongue-like projection on the anterior margin of the mandibular foramen. Mylohyoid groove. This begins just below the mandibular foramen and runs downwards and forwards to reach the body of the mandible below the posterior part of the mylohyoid line. The ramus presents with four borders. Anterior, superior, which is notched to form the mandibular notch, inferior, and posterior, and two processes, a condylar and a coronoid. The condylar process is a strong upward projection from its posterior superior part. Its upper end is expanded to form the head. The head bears a smooth articular surface that articulates with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone 
to form the temporal mandibular joint. The neck is the constricted part below the head and presents a depression on its anterior surface called the pterygoid fovea. The coronoid process is a flattened triangular projection projecting from its anterior superior part. The condylar process is separated from the coronoid process by the mandibular notch. Angle of the mandible. This is a meeting point between the posterior and inferior borders of the ramus of the mandible. Ligaments attached to the mandible are as follows. Stylomandibular ligament, which is attached to the angle of the mandible. Temporomandibular ligament, which is attached to the lateral aspect of the neck of the mandible. Sphenomandibular ligament, which is attached to the lingula of the mandible. And the pterygomandibular raphae or ligament, which takes attachment behind the last molar tooth extending till the upper end of the mylohyoid line. Nerves in relation to the mandible are as follows. The lingual nerve runs on the upper surface of the body, close to the medial side of the root of the third molar tooth. The inferior alveolar nerve enters the mandibular foramen and passes through the mandibular canal. The mylohyoid nerve runs in the mylohyoid groove. The mental nerve comes out of the mental foramen. The nerve to the masseter runs through the mandibular notch. The auriculotemporal nerve runs to the medial side of the neck. The marginal mandibular nerve runs across the lower border of the mandible. Changes in the position of the mental foramen with age. At birth, it is present below the sockets for the deciduous molar teeth near the lower border. In adults, it gradually moves upwards and opens a midway between the upper and lower borders. In old age, it lies close to the alveolar border. This is due to resorption of the alveolar process due to loss of teeth. Points to be noted. In infants and children, the body of the mandible is mainly made up of the alveolar part containing sockets for both the deciduous and permanent teeth. In adults, the alveolar and subalveolar parts of the body of the mandible are equally developed. In old age, teeth usually fall out and the alveolar border is absorbed so that the height of the body is markedly reduced. Ossification. The mandible is formed by both intramembranous and enchondral ossification. Part of the mandible between the mental and mandibular foramina ossifies in membrane from the mesenchymal sheath of Meckel's cartilage from the first pharyngeal arch. Part of the mandible medial to the mental foramen ossifies directly from the Meckel's cartilage via enchondral ossification. The coronoid and condylar processes ossify from secondary cartilages not related to Meckel's cartilage. The mandible is the second bone to ossify in the body. The center in the mesenchymal sheath of Meckel's cartilage appears during the seventh week of intrauterine life. The other centers forming the mandible appear during the 10th week of intrauterine life. At birth, the mandibles consists of two halves connected by cartilaginous nodules at the symphysis menti. The bony union starts below upwards during the first year and is completed at the end of the second year. Clinical correlation. Fractures of the mandible. The mandible occupies a prominent and exposed position of the facial skeleton. Hence, it is commonly fractured following violent injuries. The mandible tends to get fractured at one of the three following sites. At the neck of the mandible, as this is the weakest part of the bone. At the angle of the mandible, because here, abrupt curvature concentrates the force of the blow. In the canine region of the body, because the elongated root of the canine tooth reduces the bony substance and makes the mandible weaker here. The canine region is the commonest site of fracture.